and and we're live. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Jason Mernier, alongside my co-host and the co-founder of Dropshipping University, Ecom Tom. How's it going, guys? This is the second live that we've ever done, and I'm super excited for this live because there's a lot of stuff going on right now in the world of e-commerce, the world of dropshipping, pretty much the whole entire online um, ecosphere. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We don't have a PowerPoint presentation set up, but we are doing a Q&A session. So hopefully you guys came with some dropshipping specific questions. Also a quick announcement as well, down in, the, uh, down in the description, there's a link to the new wholesale dropshipping course. If you're interested in that, you can get $400 off. Go click that today and get signed up. So what are we going to be talking about today, Tom? Let's let's go over what some of what what's on our agenda basically. So yesterday we learned that Amazon is no longer taking inbound shipments for FBA. That is a big for deal. For non-essential items. For non-essential items. That's very important. So what are non-essential items? Well, it actually is category based. A lot of a lot of it is going to be industrial supplies, which I was very surprised about. Business and industrial. Tom and I love business and industrial. That's part of the essential goods. You're looking at a lot of stuff that actually does fall into the essential goods, but on the contrary to that, anybody who is still doing drop shipping from Amazon, you know, using Amazon Prime and sending it over to eBay, even though it, was, it hasn't been a good idea in the last like year because your account probably will get throttled, your supply chain is going to be cut off in the next week or two because the FBA centers, Amazon's prep centers are going to, you know, clear out stock only for essential goods. So you are, you're not going to be able to drop ship from Amazon. So if you haven't already taken your stock down, I probably would at this point, right? And then we have the whole other camp of people who still talk about drop shipping from China, like AliExpress, DHgate, Banggood. And that is a very bad idea as well, because again, the supply chain is completely cut off at the moment. So what do we want to focus on as drop shippers? We want to focus on US based wholesale suppliers or manufacturers. And that's what we talked about um, in a bunch of the previous lives that we've done. So that's really what we want to focus on. But let me know what you guys have seen for sales. Uh, Tom and I have seen a lot of our students hit some astronomical numbers, like the highest numbers they've ever hit. Because if you're still selling on eBay or Amazon and you haven't lost all your stock, your stock hasn't dried up with your supplier, you're probably going to be making a lot of sales right now because people are at home and they all they all have pretty much every single day to sit at home and buy stuff. So yeah. that's what we've been seeing. One of the biggest issues I've seen so far is... Everybody's talking about how this is like a time to capitalize on people being at home and buying things like the essential goods. But if you're drop shipping from a supplier that, you know, could possibly anything that's very, very, very specific to what people are buying, like toilet paper for some ungodly reason um, and uh, other like cleaning supplies because they feel the necessary to clean their entire house or something. I'm not sure why they're buying some of these goods. But again, I've had issues so far. I didn't even know I had toilet paper on my eBay store and I sold like four of them over the weekend and the, the supplier didn't have the stock come today when I when they told me that they had the stock yesterday. So again, a lot of these suppliers, if their websites fluctuate a decent amount, then you could run into some issues. So I think it is a great time to be learning, of course, drop shipping, you know, really focusing and honing on your craft, especially if you're at home and you know, you usually work in an office, your boss isn't breathing down your neck, you could you could relax a little bit maybe, drop ship on the side there. But again, try to play it safe. I always try to play things safe rather than sorry. Again, with my Amazon account, they called me out for having this half mask respirator that I've had on my account since October before anything coronavirus was even was a real thing. And you know, it, there's just some inherent issues with it. I tried to change the category of one of my items today and they were moist towelettes and, and eBay was literally just said, no, you can't even list these items. So be careful, but also try to capitalize as much as possible. We said we had a student hit $5,000 in sales the other day. Uh, honestly, I don't think he's ever messaged or posted in the course before at all. We had one yeah. girl that said that she hit $300 profit yesterday. And I know for a fact that she's only about a month or so into drop shipping. So, you know, there's, there's tons of, there's tons of just opportunity out there, but just play it safe as well. This is a long-term game. We've seen it all. So I, I'm 100% more, more um, proactive about things like this and definitely more weary. Like I had a Shopify store that I started the other day 
just to keep some of my items in and push them to eBay. And that got banned this morning when I woke up because I had face masks on there because <laughs> I accidentally uploaded 20,000 items from one supplier's inventory in there by accident. And I got banned. So I had to call them. Facebook is cracking down. Like our links yeah. on Facebook oh, are yeah. all effed up. Like yeah. all these companies went on autopilot, sent their workers home that were probably from the Philippines or India, India. to begin with. And their companies literally just run by AI right now. So you need to be weary of it because AI isn't as smart as it, as it, what people it will be it in the future when it takes yeah. over. So here's my quick preamble, guys. Okay, there's been a market disruption. And those of us who adapt, okay, those of us who make changes necessary and figure out where to go to get supplies to then reach the end customer, we are going to make astronomical amounts of money, probably more money in a short period of time than we would make in the rest of the year, or, you know, two quarters of the year. So, you know, stay in tune. This is a perfect time to get into drop shipping. If you're a beginner or somebody who's kind of been on the fence about it, maybe you've got more time on your hands. This is a perfect opportunity to learn it. So again, guys, this is where you want to be. Right now we have 37 people on watching right now. Smash that like button, hit the subscribe button too, and also hit the bell notification. I appreciate everybody coming out today to learn about dropshipping. Whoever disliked this video is a terrible person. Shame on you. <laughs> um, so we'll go through the comments here. I'll let Jake, can you read them? Yeah, I can read them. Right, so John Arducey, in. yeah, just zoom in a bit here. But um, also guys, let us know where you're from and let us know what you're seeing with your own dropshipping stores. If you guys currently are dropshipping, let us know where you're at. Right this is perfect. So John Arducey says, I got here early. Ecom Tomcat says, rockin' dropship. <laughs> John Arducey says, the corona wave ended for me as my items all went out of stock. And that's something that I said on a Facebook Live that I did a couple days ago. I said, those of you, and I, John, I know you actually do dropship primarily from Amazon Prime. So I said, guys, if you're using Amazon Prime, even though I've never said to use Amazon Prime in the last year, really figure out you know, if your items are gonna go out of stock because most likely they are. They're not taking any inbound shipments of non-essential goods. So if you're selling what is considered to be non-essential goods, it's at, a, at this moment, it's high risk because you don't know if the inventory is gonna be there tomorrow. And let's say you go to bed and wake up the next day and you have 10 sales and you can't get those orders completed, well, you're gonna have to cancel them and that's gonna hurt your metrics. We wanna avoid any unnecessary risk. So obviously guys, again, let's get back to using US-based wholesale suppliers and manufacturers. One so. thing about that that I want to add into place is I understand 100% people that get started, they're, they're one, two weeks, couple months, and not even their first full year into this, that the allure of using Amazon onto eBay or Walmart onto eBay is, is very large. I can understand the allure to it and I can see why you would want to go that way. But as I've been doing this for now, coming on three years, almost three full years now, and Jason's been doing it for longer than I have, I realized just the extreme benefits of finding a steady, reliable supplier that wants you or allows you and accepts, has had you sign paperwork to drop ship from them. Just because of the fact that in times of duress, times of change, things like that, and you think, oh, well, this, it hasn't happened for a while, and then something happens again, and then it hasn't happened for a while, then something happens again. If you've just been doing it correctly the entire time, then you know you wouldn't have had to worry about this or go check your stock because your Amazon's no, no longer accepting FBA, things like that. It's just issues like this that keep happening and happening and happening. I, I know for a fact that as you keep doing this, if you stick with it, you'll end up changing your methods over time because you'll be sick of some of the BS that you have to put up with. That's very, very true. Good words of advice. John R. Ducey says, why did Tom move from Boston to Colorado to Reno? Wow, he's been tracking you. Yeah, and to Reno to, and back to Boston. Well, not back to Boston yet. I <laughs> wanted to go fly there and go look at houses, but I think that that's been postponed for a bit. Yeah. Uh, so there won't be any flying but mainly because I wanted to get out of Boston, and then I realized I'm just definitely not a West Coast type of guy, <laughs> and I, I want to go back. Yeah, so basically in the last two years, Tom and I moved in together. We've gone to a bunch of different places, and it's been interesting to see different parts of the country. We have this thing in the Northeast in New England where everybody who's born there, raised there, stays there, and don't really move out. So, you know, you might as well do it while you're young, and that's part of the whole entrepreneurial journey, I would say, for both of us. I'm not saying I want to stay been... there forever, but yeah, but it's part of like a home base. being self-employed and being able to yeah. work 
work remotely is it has afforded us to live in different places. And even if we wanted to live internationally, we could. That's the type of lifestyle that, you know, th this has afforded us as, as being a drop shipper. And that's true for you guys, too. If you want to take it to that point, you absolutely could. Yeah. <clears throat> so Greg, Greg Endem says, nice hat, Uncle Jay. <laughs> GE is sheltering in place in San Francisco. Nice. Um, yeah, that was actually one of the best thumbnails, I have to admit. A little propaganda Although there. the American flag was backwards, I will say so. Yeah, that, but it was a good one, But the person made it was from India, so yeah, they might not he know might better. not even know. So ZZ says, John, for real, you made me check my stock. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So again, guys, Amazon, and especially this isn't just today either. This is going to be going forward because I think it's till April. What did you say, April 4th? That I they think it's put April the, 5th. On no more that, FBA right. inbound shipments. So, you know, this isn't going to be something that stops or has already happened and fizzled out. This is something that's going to keep happening for the next week, two weeks, three weeks, where your inventory at your supplier, if you're using Amazon, is going to dwindle down. And then what? Then you're going to probably sell some out of stock products. So be vigilant, be proactive. I had to cancel four orders today be proactive guys you definitely want to be proactive be on top of your stuff look for items you know that are falling into the category of you know sanitation and respiratory um, even if it's business and industrial equipment that you might be using for construction work or something they might still tag that with their bots as being a product that isn't allowed for sale at the moment and they want to avoid price gouging and it's completely understandable i mean it happened to you a couple of times in the last what two weeks i don't know how why shopify took my store <clears> down <throat> but left the other four connected to the same email address <laughs> yeah it is very bizarre i mean you called them up right did they did they solve it they for opened you? a ticket the lady was uh understood english um but i who knows i mean yeah so uh, we got Jameson Griffith in the house. How's it going? What's up? Watching from Tennessee. Steven Loyoza. Hello, guys. I'm early today. Lazy Abram. We got the usual. Juan Garcia is here. How's it going? Juan All Luis of Gonzalez these guys are, of course, yeah. students. Good to see you guys. How's your sales going? Let me know. Uh, S. Carpenter. Good to see you. How's it going? A Azareth. Azareth goddess. Yo, love y'all stuff. This is the first live I get to be a part of today because I'm off of work today. There you go. You better be working on some form of side income, whether it's, you know, it's drop shipping. It should be drop shipping. Um, <laughs> but, you know, at least just put in the effort. This is the time. Like, this is one of the times where I considered, like, I consider this time a blessing, honestly, because, I mean, I'm, I'm financially stable. I, I, I feel okay in this time right now. And I want to use it as a time to break down everything I've done in my businesses, like online businesses, selling businesses, and really figure out, you know, how to make them better, break them down, reinforce, and just make better, just strategies, I would say, and systems all around. And this is the time to be doing it because, you know, people are worried. If people are home from work, there's less things to really have to be doing. And right now I want to just use this time to just break everything down and just build it back stronger. Yeah. And you never know when something like this, a market disruption is a blessing in disguise and people who are opportunistic, smart, and ready to move capital around are going to make a lot of yeah. money during these times. I mean, I was too young, what, in 2007 when the housing market collapsed and we hit a recession back then, I was too young. I didn't have any money. I was still in like middle school. We were like, what? 12, 13 at the I time. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the first time in our lifetime 15, where, 12, you know, yeah. the opportunity has never been bigger. And anybody out there who's a millennial in your 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, pay attention to what's happening. These market disruptions are going to help us out if you're smart about it, if you put your money in the right place. And right now, if you work remotely, if you have a laptop and you know how to start an online, you know, an online business, sell on Amazon, sell on eBay, whatever, there's a lot of potential to make money, okay, guys? So just keep that in mind. Um, let's go back to some of these questions here. And also, if you guys like what you hear, smash that like button. So Marlon says, sup, guys? Jeff Burkhart. Hey, guys, glad to make it to the live. Corey Knight says, what's up, gents? Are you guys going to combine the wholesale course to Dropship University dashboard, trying to get it all in one place again? Just message me on Facebook. Um, I, I can give you like a unified login or whatever. Um, <clears throat> let's keep going. You want to read this next one? Yeah, here's my question. So I have some dropshipping agreements with some suppliers, but it seems like I still can't com compete with the prices unless I buy in bulk. What should I do? I'm in Texas. Um, yeah, so it really depends on what what type of these suppliers, what type of suppliers they are. Um, sometimes I have seen that you know prices for specific items on wholesalers 
might not be competitive, but other items there are. Like I called up a, a supplier the other day and they literally told me like, we can't really compete on these items, but we have our own brands for like these specific items, ink and toner and whatever. And now on these items, you'll be able to compete other ones you won't. So they, he pretty much gave me the lowdown. And also, so that's one thing if that's like a legitimate supplier and also look into what what type of supplier it is. Is it a dropship aggregator? That's pretty much just bringing together a bunch of dropshipping suppliers, charging a premium when you could get it for less from the actual supplier and kind of just using, preying on the fact that you might not know or you're, you might not want to sign up for all these other, you know, kind of laziness. And it's just inherent in human just nature, honestly. Yeah. But it, it really depends. So if it, it depends on what type of supplier it is. If you just comment down below what this, if you if you want to, what the supplier is, or if it's an aggregator, then we can. It could also, a little bit you know, further. it could also be a retail supplier posing as a wholesale supplier, yeah. and I talk about that in depth in my new course. Is red flags and posers, and what's a poser? A poser is a company. They they're most likely a retail company, or they're just an intermediary, another dropshipper like us, who kind of fit themselves in the supply chain. Get in contact with a wholesale supplier, and then they pretend like they're the wholesale supplier, then passing on a marked up product to other drop shippers. Like Doba. And it's really, it's I, I hate people who do this because you know it, they, they're really smart in their approach and they can fool you because they will send you a drop ship agreement and they you know they they present themselves in a way to make themselves seem legit. But there's telltale signs to look for. And I talk about that in depth in the course. There's telltale signs that these companies show. And if you know what those telltale signs are, it'll help you when you know getting fooled basically by a retail supplier trying to be a wholesale supplier so um let's see nicholas uh says how the hell do you add variants on ebay i have a wholesaler in the clothing niche but i can't make variations so you variations are actually hands. pretty simple to do within natively within ebay um when you when you list a new item just go add new item and then you'll see the kind of like the creator dashboard or the listing dashboard and i want to say it's like it's, it's a couple things down. It's like title, subtitle, and then it's above photo. So it's somewhere in between there, and you'll see variants or add variants. But there are some categories where you can't even put variations in. So if it's a category that you can't put variations in, then then so be it. You can't put variations in. But most categories you can put variations in. You can in. look it up. There's uh, It's a weird list, and it doesn't really make sense as to why you can't. Yeah. You can't. Clothing, obviously, I'm sure you can across the board because there's multiple different sizes yeah, and everything. Yeah, colors and stuff. But yeah. one thing to keep in mind is that if the item's already listed, then you can't add variations to it. You have to add variations to it while it's being created. That's that's correct, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what you I can't retroactively add variations to an already created listing that you might have. That's probably the issue that you're running into here. Yeah. So what you should do is first of all, I would stop selling clothing. That's my personal take. But if, they, <laughs> if you want to sell clothing, if you want to sell clothing, go for it. But it it has a higher rate of return, more customer service. You know, and Nancy in in Utah wants to buy three <laughs> shirts and they're no, all different sizes. She's probably sizes. Mormon. She has morals. It would be somebody <laughs> else. True. She wants to buy three three shirts or three pants that day. She's going to get three shipped to her and then return two. I don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. But, I mean, if the profit margins are there for you, then so be it. Um, that's one thing. But also go back and look. If you've already put up the listing, you can't retroactively do it. So I would take down that existing listing and start a new listing. Add the variations during the creation process. You should be all set. But the variations actually are a little more advanced if you want to be tracking the inventory and the price level. Yeah, it's, it's very kind of hard pain. to do. Yeah, um, some some software can do it, not very many. And I remember the dude that runs AutoDS told me it was impossible. Told me it was impossible to create a software back in the day, like a year ago. He lied to you. Told me it was impossible to create software that can accurately create variations. And I was like, thinking about it now, like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I think he was fibbing to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'll move on to the next question here. Is uh, Je Jeff says, did you pick a name yet, Jason? Mine was good. Bearded whole shipper. I think bearded drop shipper would honestly be good. Or like the bearded drop shipper. <laughs> the bearded but then drop if you sh shipper. Yeah. If you shave your beard, dude, you look oh, like that's such a the, phony. That's the thing, guys. I was supposed to only have it for one year. So if I shave this off in July, then what? I'm basically. I've been telling Jason though, oh. nobody's gonna take him seriously if he ever cuts his beard. So he has to keep it. <laughs> where it's at right now. That's very, See, I, very That's why true. I keep no beard. If you guys like that, the bearded dropshipper, smash that like button. All right, so John Arduzzi says, I went through Amazon, Walmart, and Home Depot before I was out of stock. 
Okay, so at least you did your due diligence to look on another website to see if it was there. And, you know, if it was a hot selling product or it's a high demanded product because of all the turmoil with people right now, then, you know, you're probably not going to be able to find it. Hopefully, John, you don't have to cancel too many. Do what you can to get those orders fulfilled. But if you have to, you're probably going to have to cancel some orders. So hopefully your metrics, too, are really high so that you can take a little bit of a hit right now and not have to worry about going below standard. So you can read this next question. Hello, are you guys considering dropping the price of the course considering so many have been laid off, bars and restaurants are laying off with no pay, so kind of stuck? Honestly, I don't think, we didn't really think about that. I'm not, I'm not sure. It would have to be a conversation behind the scenes of what we plan to do, but I, I'm unsure as to what we plan on doing. We already have it at 40% off on this course, yeah. um, and I think that that's a rather steep discount. I don't think we'll go any lower on that course, but we could run sales on our older courses if people are interested. If you are interested in that, then just let us know in the comments. We could do something like that. But uh, since this is a new course and we really only have it dropped down to the price, this price for our course students and people that signed up early already for the pre-sale, then I think we're going to keep this one here. But uh, you know, on my channel, you could go find links to other ones. We'll run, we'll run course deals on that. I, I think it's also pretty, it's more than fair at the moment. I mean, like Tom said, it's 40% off. We're trying to uh, incentivize as many people to, tra you know, transition to wholesale dropshipping at the moment. I think that's more than fair. I do understand some people have been laid off, but at the same time, the, nobody else is talking about wholesale dropshipping. It is completely unique. Um, there's a lot of people who are killing it, and it's really the only sustainable business model, in my opinion, going forward. So, you know, I don't really see, I, we bought, remember we bought the first dropshipping course we ever took for a thousand bucks and that like, was terrible. it was so, so, so bad. So like, you know, I'm not going to devalue my own work and Tom's work. We put in three months of solid, solid content creation. A lot of work goes into the We bought a thousand dollar course and the dude had his own VAs making videos for him. Yeah. Just that, a genius it was, idea, but honestly. It was poor. It was a poor course. So Latravius McKay says Jason is the quote unquote, the bearded one. One. So, all right, there I like go. that. Barry's Barry, here. Thank what's you, up, Barry? Barry, for signing up. I'll get back to you in a bit about the whole house-related things. I don't think I can fly home to Massachusetts to look at any houses. <laughs> so Marlon A says, I'm in Costa Rica. I would like to get an EIN number. I went to the IRS site, but I didn't find anything for international. I heard you mention that we could help. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so you definitely can. We get an personally EIN have number. no idea how to do it. We have people. We are in not international, but that's why we've teamed up with a service provider who specializes in international tax exemption, getting internationals U.S. based addresses, getting you U.S. based credit cards. We've teamed up with somebody who's a specialist in that, and that's part of you know that's the reason that we've done it. We are not going to sit here and say we're international. And we know how to do it, but there's definitely ways to do it. Also, look up um, ITIN number two. I know you don't need an ITIN number. That's international tax identification number. You don't need it. Honestly. But it think. is something to look into. And also look up disregarded entities. Um, those two phrases, you might find some interesting things if you're in your research phase. So share seekers <laughs> from Tewksbury, Mass, literally the town next to where I grew up. I grew up in Billerica, Massachusetts. So that's very interesting. I'm not I don't, I'm not sure if you knew that. That's it's pretty it's a small How world. How close out. is Tewksbury? It touches Billerica. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. It's a small world out there. <laughs> I feel like we've had a lot of ran, like random times where people have reached one, out and they're from... One person that said, I remember you from wrestling or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah your buddy from home last time. Yeah. So, um, dude, I'm just popular. <laughs> Azoth, I, Azeroth, Azeroth dude, Goddess on. says, and I know y'all are lift uh, I don't think it's Azeroth, iffy either. about Walmart, but I bought the last two of some of the emergency foods they have, so marked up the price since I will be shipping it myself with this be considered price gouging. So you went into a Walmart store, bought some emergency foods, and then marked them up and put them online. And the emergency foods it, are $6.84. That it, doesn't sound worthwhile to me. It, it also depends how much did you mark it up. If you marked it up by a lot, like let's say you're selling a can of beans for like a hundred bucks, that that's probably price gouging. <laughs> but I feel like if you go, you know, you're covering your shipping costs. Your I time, personally but, wouldn't. It's not do it, price but. gouging. I, I yeah, I honestly wouldn't waste my time doing it because you know there, there's still more than enough stock. I went to the Walmart to here. Doing it. 
Yeah, plus what happens if eBay just flags your account or, or Amazon flags your account as selling products that are essential goods and they think that you're price gouging based on whatever metrics they use and whatever robots they send out. It, it's not worth risking your account just to make a little bit of money when you could really go and sell a ton of other products that are considered non-essential goods and be making a ton of money just because people are sitting on their ass doing nothing but shopping online and watching Netflix right now. That's the truth. That's me. <laughs> That's literally the truth. That's what people I'm have nothing better to do than go online shopping, binge shopping, and sit around and watch TV. Um, so, you know, you don't need to sell essential goods and risk getting the price gouging message or getting your account in trouble. So they said original sale price was $9.99, but just added $4 shipping price. I think they may be retail suppliers. Oh, that, oh that was the other part of their... Uh, uh, yeah, okay, I, I don't yeah. really see that much margin in there, do you? No, they're talking about this. This is to do with the uh, other question they had about their wholesale supplier not being competitive. Oh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, okay, we were, we're getting, way behind on the we're questions. Getting, we're getting mixed up here. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to some other questions here. Latravius McKay says, Jason, are you still drop shipping with Etsy? I am not drop shipping with Etsy at the moment. I um, stopped drop shipping with Etsy around the new year. Uh, I was just trying to shift focus and put out this new course basically but um etsy is you know etsy is a small marketplace they don't have a lot you're not going to get a ton of ton of sales unless you have something super unique something super super popular um but when you're drop shipping on there and you're just kind of getting these lifestyle pictures taking your own lifestyle pictures and selling them, it's it's a nice little side hustle but it's not in my opinion it's very hard to scale and take it to another level because they just don't have the traffic that an amazon has that an ebay has they really just don't at this point they're they're a pretty small company, honestly. Yeah, I don't know what percentage they have, but it's not large. It is, I want to say it's like 1%, 2% of all e-commerce is Etsy. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, Ephraim Peter says, hey, Tom, would the price go down this is for Jason's the wholesale channel. Course? You need to address Jason. <laughs> As I said before, we already addressed that. So, um, yeah. We can run back. a sale on our eBay retail course and on our Amazon course, but right now we're already running a sale on this one. It's going to stay where it is and message us on, not on Facebook. Um, I don't even know. We can't send links to you guys on Facebook. Yeah, so, Facebook's weird right um, now. I don't know. All right, message us on Facebook and then we'll send you a link that has t multiple spaces yeah. in between it. <laughs> so, and you have to get rid of the spaces. So the goddess says, I think they may be retail suppliers posing. Yes. Yeah, so earlier I was talking about the posers. And um, that, that's exactly what I thought when I heard that whole thing going on, is probably retail suppliers posing as wholesale suppliers. There's a lot of them out there. Tom, you can get so this next one. Saab, Saab, uh, like the car, says, I made, a, I made stupid thing and bought a bunch of wholesale products to sell on eBay based on their sale rate without considering competition. Now, how can I get rid of that? So you mean sell-through rate? I think, think you mean I think you're rate. going to want to sell them on eBay probably uh, to get rid of them. But it, I don't I, I don't know how much you bought or what you bought of. It, you just said a whole bunch of items. Uh, it really depends if, if eBay. I don't think is really the, the the website to be buying in wholesale in bulk and be selling it on eBay. I would say that that's definitely a better idea for Amazon because of just the, the sheer traffic that comes on Amazon every day. eBay is great for drop shipping because you can put a bunch of items up. You don't have to buy them up front and you know you can make sales when they come in. Uh, but with Amazon, you could probably make a full-time income off of like three listings. As oh, long you definitely as you can. You easily could. Um, I've done it many so times. It's, it, I think that that's better for Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, maybe sell them on there. I'm not sure what they are, but I, I would not say eBay is the best site anymore to be doing wholesale in bulk purchasing unless it was like you bought them you have them on amazon and you're also just trying to sell them on ebay as well but like i've had an item sell 300 times a month on on amazon where i've had this item up since may on ebay it sold 160 times since may and so you did more sales in one month double, on amazon like just triple double as many sales in one month on amazon than you did in the entire year with that same product on ebay what's may to 10 months on ebay. yeah yeah it's funny because I've had the reverse thing happen, but not at that scale. So like I've sold one item on eBay like nine times in one month and only sold it once on Amazon. It doesn't usually happen, but sometimes it does. Um, and it's it never on that scale where like 300, three to one. Basically. That's why drop shipping on eBay is so powerful because again, it's definitely, any everybody out there knows it's not as popular as Amazon. But again, 
it's easier to get started. It's a lower barrier to entry, less risk. You know, if you get, even if you got banned, worst case scenario is you have all your money still. Yeah. Um, and really it's just, it's the easier platform to get started on with less like big dogs. Like Amazon has some big dogs in a lot of these categories. And if you try to get into even Walmart onto Amazon, you have no idea what to, what you're doing. You're gonna just gonna you're gonna make no sense. What's the biggest yet. dog you've ever seen on Amazon? Like I don't even know, dude. There's Multi some that have millions. there's some that have like two hundred thousand items on their store. Yeah, and it's like I I'd, I'd be so afraid to. You do run that. through there with Ace Inspector Pro on their yeah, first couple pages, the ones, and you start but... looking sniping them. <laughs> That's again, I don't true. even think I would ever really want to get to that point. That's just like way too much unnecessary stress. I feel like I'd have a heart attack at like age Yeah, because you got 35. capital all tied up in Amazon. And even if you use Payoneer to, you know, take out some of that Payoneer, stress. Payability. Payability, payability, sorry. Um, it doesn't even take out the stress because they if can you get still come back in on trouble, you, then it's they just they come way you. too high risk. Um, so uh, next question here comes in from Marion A. Marion says, I've been to some of those sites you mentioned. I read some are wholesaler or distributor. So to drop ship, is it best to contact a distributor? Um, it's best to contact a supplier that you want to work with. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're a wholesale distributor or, or manufacturer, or if you decide to use an obscure retailer, that's okay too. Is it best to contact them first? Yes, it absolutely is. But is it? I think your question was kind of framed in a weird way where it says, is it best to contact a distributor? Not necessarily. There are some ma great manufacturers to use and you know you could either contact the manufacturer or the wholesale supplier. You could also contact the manufacturer and ask if they have wholesale suppliers or yeah. if the, who they sell to or anything like that. Authorize distributors and, and go directly to the wholesale supplier. Yeah, because sometimes they don't have a cart or integrated anything on their website. They don't want to sell to anybody besides a distributor. Yeah, yeah. One thing, um, going back on a question from like five minutes ago where somebody said that they had bought a bunch of products in bulk or something, um, you know, with this whole FBA thing where people cannot send inbound shipments to Amazon right now, there's going to be some people who are private labelers or just, you know, the big volume kind of guys that just buy in bulk and, and send it into FBA. There's going to be some people who have dead stock. What that means is they have massive amount of inventory sitting in their house, their garage, their little facility. And what are they going to do with it most likely in the next month? Liquidate it. For cheap. it. Discount liquidation. And if you guys are on the lookout, you could probably get some massively discounted products right now. And then you're basically doing all the work of shipping it out fulfillment. But if you have time, why not? You can get these products massively discounted. That's what I'm anticipating to happen in the next couple of weeks here. So be on the lookout for that. What do you think about that? I think a bunch of them are going to try to get into drop shipping. Oh, that's true too. Because yeah, I mean, everybody's saying, "Oh, drop shipping is going to be king," and I mean, at the moment, it is. So, what do you think all these private label guys are going to be doing? I what do you think they're all going to be doing? I, they're all going to be coming over to this side of the fence, dude, so and they're going to start drop shipping, and most likely, they're going to be drop shipping from the big retailers because that's all they know, and that's the easiest barrier to entry. Get started with Amazon, Walmart, whatever. And they're not going to know how to do dropshipping the right way. That's why I say, guys, if you get into wholesale dropshipping right now, this is a massive opportunity to be ahead of the curve. And when all these other sellers, all these other e-commerce guys come over to dropshipping, you will have a differentiation in your business model. And those guys will all be fighting for scraps and driving the prices down to nothing. And you will be on the better side of it where you're actually making real money. Okay, That's the best part of wholesale dropshipping, high profit margins. <clears throat> So let's see here. What do we have? Nicholas says, haha, it's baby clothing. I actually created a new listing and it won't let me do the variations, but oh, well, well I'll figure it out. Maybe there days. isn't variations on baby clothing. I could imagine. <laughs> I that would there imagine is. they I, are. Babies go through clothing faster than any other thing out there. Yeah. So I feel like there has to be variations. When you're but... when you're on the builder page, just press control F variations. Control and... F stands for control find. Um, yeah. some people I supposedly don't know what copy and paste is either, but <laughs> you're gonna have to learn the computer for this business. It's, it's press it's control essential. F 
it, and you put in variations and it will show any on the page that where the variations is. So my guess is it, just because it's baby clothes, they probably still have variations. You gotta have different sizes, colors, boys, girls, whatever. So, you know, they probably you do have it. You probably just haven't seen you it. You cannot specify between boys that and girls. That is true. They chosen. And, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Zemlich says, don't ever have VAs create courses for you. Yeah, we, I don't think we plan on doing I that at all. I will not do that. Ever. That, that's is. where I cross the line. I would not do that. My, my line is pretty set as where it is. I would never have a VA do that. Um, Saab says, it seems competition is so high on cheap junks in UK eBay. Yeah, I've never sold on eBay UK, but um, something that's a cheap junk item is a commodity item. That means that it's mass produced and it doesn't have any differentiation. And the only reason people are buying it is because it's a low price. So when there's something like that, that's a commodity item, the competition is high, the profit margins are low. Go where other people aren't going, add value to the listing, add value to the product. That is how you make profit. It's just base, basically supply and demand there. Um, Nicholas says, oh, and, that, and what's your guys take on sale who to find legit wholesalers? Tom can answer this one. You could find suppliers on sale who we do mention inside of our <laughs> course briefly, very briefly. It's a directory. It's definitely not the best out there, and it's definitely the most used one out there. So, you know, it's it's cheaper than some of the other paid ones, so the, the barrier to entry is lower, and they do very well at marketing. So they, they market themselves very well, and they are definitely the most popular one out there for what they do. So you need to realize that, and they don't provide that that many drop shippers compared to some of the, some of the larger ones uh, that we talk about in the course. So it... They're okay. You could probably find some out there, but again, a lot of them are going to be the aggregators, and then some of the other ones, it could be decent, but again, they're going to have a, uh, a large to decent amount of competition already on them. <clears throat> but I'm sure if you, you know, put your mind to it and try to diversify your items or your listings any way, shape, or form, then you'll be able to make sales with we some have, of their suppliers. Yeah, we have better directories that we talk about in the course directly. Um, I would be aware, guys, if you come across Doba and um, what's the other big one there? Nova Tech Wholesale Nova Tech sucks. Wholesale Petra and sucks. Petra. Those three are three of the biggest aggregators, and you're probably going to see a lot of them. I had a revelation for Doba the other day because they talk, they admit they're uh, an aggregator. I feel like other ones don't they, admit they try they're to an aggregator. Yeah. They're like, oh, no, we're Nova Tech Wholesale. Um, you know, Doba does say, like, we, we have all of these suppliers that we, you know, if you sign up through us, then you can sell through them. And then they have higher tiered ones that you need to then, I think, either pay or apply again in a different way. So uh, what I believe is happening with Doba is they're legitimately like taking your information because I signed up last night. They pass on, they pa they ask you some information, then they pass that to the actual suppliers. So you're like okay, or maybe they have an agreement with the supplier that's like if they sign up through Doba, then they're good to go. Yeah. And then you know other ones that aren't okay with that, you need to fill out more stuff. Oh, that so I right, think yeah. that Doba is a good idea to go in there, take their suppliers, and then just go sign up for them on their own website without <laughs> Doba. I think that that's a good idea. I'm not Cut sure how effective it is. I just had that revelation last night at midnight while I was lying in bed. Um but yeah, that could that could that's a possibility. Definitely as well. a possibility to cut out the middleman. Also, guys, anybody's watching right now who doesn't know what a drop ship aggregator or a wholesale aggregator is, it is pretty much a website that you pay a subscription. It's a small fee usually, but it's a fee where you pay either monthly or yearly to get access to their exclusive relationships with wholesale suppliers. Some of these wholesale suppliers might not even be wholesale suppliers, but you're paying a premium to have a middleman put all these things together for you. So, you know, it's it's like a directory in a it's sense. It's like a lazy man's way to find wholesale suppliers it, and you get price gouged. It, yeah, you definitely get price gouged on it. It's, I always say stay away from aggregators. It's not worth it. I teach you guys exactly how to go directly to the source, get the middleman out of here. We want to preserve the profit margins on our sales, and that's how you have to do it. Get these middlemen out of there. So, all right, if you guys like what you're hearing, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel, too. Let's and get we're Jason gonna, up to 5,000 followers be awesome. in some amount of time in the future. I would love that. So, guys, smash that like button. We're going to go through the rest I of your questions I just hit 15,000, by the way. I couldn't announce it on my own live, so I'm going to announce it right here. Tom's going to plug 15, himself. 15,000 yesterday. I'm not even going to say what the channel name is. I <laughs> we hit 15,000. It's fine. It's ecom, Tom. But, all right, guys, we got 20 minutes left. We're going to go through the rest of the questions here. Drop questions if you have any more.
more wholesale drop shipping, the current state of you know e-commerce, not the state of the union. Um, you know, let us know any of the questions that you guys might have. Let me know where you guys are at with your own dropshipping stores. Because I know there's people out here watching right now that are crushing it. They're killing it. They're the silent assassins. Let us know. Give us some feedback right now. So John Arduzzi says, I'm pretty sure I'm losing top rated status because orders are going to take nine days to ship. I took the sales and hit. I made four months profit in six days. Wow. It was great even if I'm not top rated after. Yeah, yeah so honestly, you'll never get in trouble for late shipments more than just um the you know, tracking is not uploaded on time and shipped on time you'll never go below standard for it so although you did most likely 100 percent lose top rated status it's if you you have to weigh it you know I, i'm not going to sit up here we're not going to sit up here and say you know just take the risk do this you know it's your it's own risk reward it's your thing. own um decision i've uh, you know we all have to make our own decisions in life i had to make the decision to cancel like four items today it, it it's it happens so you know, just take it, take it how it is, but just don't, don't go over the top. You know, like I feel like you did it smartly or in a smart way, but you could easily mess up too. Yeah, that's also pretty awesome. Again, Tom was talking about the risk reward situation there. You made four months profit in six days. So in less than a week, you made what you had made in profit the prior four months. That's amazing. That's awesome. And that's the type of opportunity that's out there right now for anybody watching. Okay, if you're a beginner, if you're somebody who's kind of just been spinning your tires, you're only listing on one item here, five items there, this is an opportunity to double down. And that's really we, what we think. And is we had somebody in our course the other day that said they showed a screenshot of like their sales from three, two months ago or something, and they showed their sales now. They, they had like literally barely any sales, and then it was like 5,000 or something. Like they had just hit 5,000 in the last 30 days. And they were like, it's amazing what happens when you actually put your head down and work at this. You know, some people are like spinning their tires. Should I do this? I don't know. Maybe this is better. And then they get, you know, what we call analysis paralysis or paralysis by analysis. You're just sitting there. And I even find myself in that situation sometimes. It's like, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? I can't do this until it's perfect. My system has to be perfect. But again, it'll never be perfect. And you'll never know how to make a perfect system until you realize what the flaws or the potential flaws could be in that system. So you know, just take the, take the action list items. It doesn't matter if your first item sucks or you listed a terrible list and it looks like ass. You know, it, 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 you, you'll get better the next time. You'll always improve and you'll know what's, how to make it better as you go. That's very true. But John, you know, making four you months- You get because I swore that would be fun. Uh, it, oh, you, you don't have monetization yet. You made four months of profit in six days. And, and this is how I kind of look at that. Even though you're gonna lose top rated status, at the end of the day, it's the profit that matters. The bottom line matters. That's your take home. That's what you're putting in your pocket. That's what you're feeding your family with. That's what matters, okay? Top rated status is good and all, and it probably down the road will help increase sales, grow sales. But the profit is what matters. Yeah. And I tell people that all the time. It does not necessarily mean how much sales you're getting or what badge you got this day or what eBay says about you this day. It's what your profit is. That's really, really what matters. So. Um, ZZ says, why would Amazon hire 100,000 employees to cover the demand and then cut off FBA non-essential items? Well, it, that's how much traffic they're I'm getting. Sure there's right a now. lot of demand for essential items. There's that much demand. People are buying anything and everything that they can get, non-essential and essential, more essential, but they need people, they need bodies to go into work and pick, pack, you know, ship out these items, do the driving, do the logistics, all of that stuff needs a massive workforce. That's why I'm assuming they would have hired 100,000 people. I also could imagine that first off, they're not going to just like, they didn't just hire 100,000 people in like a day. I'm sure that there that there's a, a plan here that either this is a slower time in some aspects of their business, and then obviously in the essential goods business, it's it's clearly booming. So you put some of them there, then they'll have time to train all these other you know, thousands of people in other things that they're going to build up in the future when you know this this whole thing blows over. So. Again, I haven't talked to good old Jeffy B about it yet, but um, <laughs> I, I, that's what I think. Oh, man, that's good. All right, so Juan, Juan Luis Gonzalez Garcia says, I am from Colombia. You just have to call the IRS and request an EIN for a foreign sole proprietorship. Okay, so that's if you want so to organize you, as a sole proprietorship, which is fine. 
But um, yeah, go ahead and call. That's another thing is you guys can call up the IRS. I swear they're oh, nice it's terrible. people. It's not fun. You might get put no, on hold for a half hour. But they're nice people. They're regular people. And, you know, calling them up and asking them questions about your business entity is what you need to do sometimes. Okay? So uh, go ahead and call them up on the phone. The goddess says, I bought it online. And, yeah, okay, thank you. LOL, y'all just answered my question and probably won't see my replies. We'll see every reply. We, we answer every, single, every single question on don't, this channel. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We got Stephen Webster in the house from Washington. How's Azeroth Goddess says, you're right. I just ended those listings. Thank you. I'm about to go and try it. You could just eat those, eat, eat the emergency food that you bought two of uh, is, <laughs> if, you're, if you get hungry. That's true. Um, you know, maybe you'll need it in the future. Who knows? That's and the true. apocalypse comes. Um, <laughs> trying to go and try and find some new suppliers. Yeah, the, the, you taking and buying two emergency foods and putting them on eBay and trying to make like $5 a pop is in nowhere close to as advantageous of a move as going and finding a new supplier. You know, you can go out and find a bunch of suppliers today that could give you all the emergency foods you ever wanted or any other type of product out there that you can then make profit on today, tomorrow, a year from now, when that was more just like a short-term, very small monetary gain, where, yes, the, the margin could possibly be there, but on a, a small amount of money, your time's spent better el elsewhere. And we always have to... As business owners, and Jason and I and you guys, you have to really weigh the pros and the cons versus where your time is spent. There's only 24 hours a day. If you work an eight-hour job, you know, and you're, you have to go into work, you know, then that's eight hours that you most likely can't be doing something else. When you come home, you might have family, other things to do. You know, you're only going to have a certain amount of hours a day to be spending on building a business like this. Sure, Jason and I have endless amounts of hours a day, but again, that we have so many things that we could possibly do that I could fill up 24 hours every single day and nonstop doing things like this. So we have to pick what, pick and choose what's going to be the best for us in the future and where you're going to get the most reward for the least amount of time. Yeah. So, all right. So what's the next question here? Uh, I'm not sure where we left We're right off here. here. Sent Jason a screenshot of my oh, problem. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll, to it. I'll get to it in the private Facebook group. <clears throat> Well, your cousin's uh, my in cousin's here in here, Alexander. How's my mom it going? might be here too. She sent me a picture. Oh. Kathy Cormier, let us know if you're Forgot here. Forgot to mention. Alexander you, mom. says, "What up? Uh, what is the king?" Uh, he said, "What up, kingpins of e-commerce? Stay healthy, bros, and don't come home." You <laughs> just I, don't want us home. <laughs> um, Mo says, "Can I use Amazon FBA now?" Uh, no, I, I definitely <laughs> would not use Amazon FBA I now, especially, especially now because Amazon FBA, even if you're, if you're sending your products into FBA that you can't because they're not accepting any inbound shipments of non-essential goods, as I said before. And if you were thinking about using Amazon FBA, AKA Amazon prime to drop ship onto Amazon, I mean, drop ship onto eBay, it's a bad idea because the product Inventory is going to dwindle down in the next week or two. Therefore, you're going to probably sell a lot of out-of-stock products, which is a bad idea, and it's going to hurt your metrics. That is and that pretty segues much... into what Juan Luis just said. Just ran out of stock with an item that I sold. The item was back in stock with just one unit available and tried to buy it, but someone was a step ahead of me. Yeah. So that is an issue. Out of stocks are an issue. You know, it's it happens. I had to cancel four orders today. I didn't. I almost never cancel any orders from the supplier that I use, mainly for one of my eBay stores. Um, but it, it happens. I would look all over the internet to see if it's a name brand item. It, it, you could possibly find it on another website. Less popular ones are getting less traffic than the Amazons and the Walmarts and the Ebays, so you could possibly find it elsewhere. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to skip over Stephen's uh, question because he's already asked that. Uh, so Clean NYC says, hey there, hey there, guys, just watch some of your YouTube videos with my fiance. We definitely appreciate all of the info. We are super new to dropshipping. We are looking for uh, the help to be successful. So that's awesome. Um, I'm glad you've enjoyed our content. And yeah, so just you know, dive right into this. I honestly think this is a great time for you and your fiance if she wants to uh, start dropshipping. There's never been a better time where there's more opportunity oh, to they're make asking quick, for a one-on-one -on -one now. Quick, quick, quick. Jason, cash are you flow. gonna do a one-on-one? -on -one Who's with that? So the clean? same question? Yeah, no. Here's a phone number. Don't give your phone number out over the internet. That's that a bad idea. There's Forty-four. At the moment, we, Tom and I are not doing one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Um, Last time just, I did a one-on-one, -on -one, the person just never like only, they never showed only up. Did Thirty minutes of it 
It's like, oh, I need to do the other 30 minutes later, and then just never. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I I don't want to sound like pompous or anything, but, you know, the time that I have during the day needs to be put to doing, you know, productive business things. That's why. And um, the money, it's just the cost that the charge for our one on one compared to buying our course is, it doesn't even make sense to do do a one on one. And that's kind of the reason why we price it that high. Um, That's very true. We value our time. And again, I don't think. The one-on-ones, you're going to get a lot more out of it just buying a course because it's the, our shortest one's 15 hours long. So. Yeah, you'll get a lot more out of doing that. Plus, you'll get access to us indirectly, indirectly through um, Facebook groups. So, you know, I would definitely right do that. Um, Marlon A says, that's what I usually do with SaleWho in all directories. I directly go to their to their websites and sign up the ad. yeah that's exactly what Tom was talking about earlier it's a good idea I think you had that you had that revelation today no that was with Doba so oh. who, I, I think it only makes sense to go to their website but yeah other things like other directories do allow you to apply on their directory I, I've also heard of people you know abusing the refund policies on those and just signing up getting suppliers info are you then, talking about yourself no 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 I, I've heard of people doing that in the Facebook groups but you didn't hear it from me. Um, so most oh, differential equation says, how does tax exemption work for wholesale? There tax is no exemption tax. is very, very easy. So when you get signed up with a wholesale supplier or manufacturer, they send you over a wholesale contract, a wholesale agreement. Usually part as part of the wholesale agreement is a section on the tax information. So they're going to ask you for your EIN number. They're going to ask you for your tax ID number for your state, whatever your state nexus is. And they're probably going to give you a multi-jurisdiction form where you just put in no nexus, no nexus, no nexus. And that's really it. It's once you, you can't, you're not going to be accepted by a wholesale supplier. You know, it, you know, you're never going to be paying taxes from a wholesale supplier once you, get accepted. once you get accepted. It's much, much easier in my opinion than um, retail The only thing I've seen exemption. issues with it was you had that one supplier that like had a retail storefront and then they kind of asked for paperwork from like Illinois or Red, something. Like retroactively it weird, basically. Yeah. It was a very, uh, obtu- like a really strange situation that happened but most of them are very yeah. straightforward, streamlined. You fill out that wholesale agreement, you give them all the information and this is another two people People think, oh, if I don't get the wholesale agreement, um, if, if I don't get, you know, approved the first time, then I'm going to be out of luck. No, they'll, they'll come back to you and they'll say, hey, you didn't fill out this section right or we need more information here or whatever. And they work with you and then you get accepted and you're good to go. It's a very streamlined process. The reason process. they have a link on their website advertising it, you know, it might not be saying... We allow wholesale dropshipping in big capital letters on the top, but they paid somebody to literally put the word wholesale or dropshipping at the bottom of their website. They're clearly allowing you to do such a thing. Yeah, absolutely. So Mo asked, are you okay, question mark. We're both great, Mo. I hope you're... I'm I healthy you're, as an ox. He's fit as a fiddle. Fit as a fiddle. And we've never been better. <laughs> we just did a, a prison workout at our local jungle gym. Uh, yep. Some pull-ups and some dips. It was great. <laughs> so Ephraim Peters says, just purchased the wholesale course. I am new to dropshipping to eBay. I hope it will um, be... Not be hard. Oh, not be hard. For me, since I am a novice, thank you guys. Um, yeah, so I... I made that with the understanding that some people were going to be beginners. So I started off nice and slow at a really easy, slow pace to ease yourself into it. Learn the model, learn how drop shipping works from wholesale suppliers, learn all of the distinct advantages between wholesale drop shipping versus retail drop shipping. So I go very in depth. Uh, Tom was like, are you, are you still working on the first section? Yeah. I was stuck. Cause I kept it nice and slow. The first like hour and a half is nice and slow for beginners. I kept you so in mind. Thank you for taking action, and you're going to love the course. Yes, absolutely. Um, Marlon says thanks at Juan Luis. Okay. Anthony says pan out so we can see your IG handles. Honestly, you're only missing the half of an M from Ecom Tom, from what I can see. What's um, your new handle? We're gonna, we're gonna leave you to. Um, it's Tom Cormier. It's just at Tom Cormier. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's the new handle. The, this is the old handle. We're not we're not pushing that one as much. I'll push it. It's just it, I, I hate that account honestly. <laughs> Most has so many issues. Moses, what are the essential items on Amazon? It, you just go on, um, just do a quick Google search. I mean, it's all over the uh, internet at the moment. It's category based. So I think, I'm pretty sure it's category based. I definitely saw business and industrial in there. You know, they're going to be selling baby formula, food, stuff like that, water, uh, cleaning supplies. Um, you know, just look at it, it's category based. My cousin says you guys should def, uh, 
You guys should get the audio of these and publish them as podcasts. Why would you listen to me talk for an hour? He's already doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of but course I mean, you would. You just sit there and listen to me talk for an hour on a podcast. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's something we have talked I'll about at one question. point. Um, uh, this is a podcast. I, I don't think it's the worst idea. Um, it's just I don't think it's it's necessary at the moment. Yeah. I mean, it's just not 100% necessary. Yeah, Mark tried to do a podcast. and I don't know if he, that fizzled out or I whatever. I kind of liked it, but you know, there's not a lot of people doing podcasts in our space. There's some. Um Saab says, do you just teach piggybacking already selling products? Can't we predict high selling dropshipping product based on similar products selling rate? So uh, I'm assuming you're talking about Amazon because Amazon has the term piggybacking. There's no real piggybacking in eBay considering you can't really hop on a listing, um, but you can sell the same item. So if you're in, in regards to Amazon, if that's what you're talking about, I do teach piggybacking personally, but at the end of the course, Jason teaches how to create Amazon listings and whatnot. Honestly, I have never once in my entire life created a brand new listing on Amazon. I don't feel the need. I've made plenty of money not doing it, and um, I don't see the reason to. But I, I do see, you know, if you want to, why you would, and um, you know, Jason, Jason knows how to do that. Well, that's the best part about our course is the fact that we collaborate, and I have my own strategies, Tom has his own strategies, everybody's gonna have their own strategies. You combine the two, and you can kind of see two different pathways, two different guides to doing it. So I always like being able to see multiple people do different things, and everybody has their own strategies. Some strategies work better than others. I think both of us have good strategies in place. Also, guys, we got five minutes left. We've already been on for 55 we'll minutes. Over. Wow. This is your, you need to get the watch time to get monetized, That's true. Jason. So help me out, help out the channel, smash that 4, like button. 4,000 watch hours. He's only at like 2,500. He needs Smash that, that like you button. You can't leave this. Boost up you that YouTube this. algorithm for me. Help out the channel and show me some love and support. Um, and we're going to get through the last bit of questions here. So my mom's here. She says, hi, Thomas and Jason. How's it going? Steven Webster says, Jason, I'm an old guy trying to make the course. I know. We made the course. If you're it just, he'll respond to you on Facebook. I can't respond on a live yeah, right now without you asking a question. Uh, I just thought of a name for Jason, Drop King Jason. That could be a possibility. Uh, I like the bearded drop. Not the worst. Honestly, not the dude. worst. And then you could just be like rubbing your beard and stuff. <laughs> the entire time. Mo says I want to buy stock from wholesalers and want to know what are the essential items. I think you already asked that question. Yeah. Andrews Garcia says, Tom, can you share with us again two websites where you can find good products to drop ship? Help help the beginner. They will be glad for this. He's oh, speaking to you, Tom. I completely zoned out. Um, Andrew says, Tom, can you share with us again two websites where we can find good products to drop ship? Help to the beginner. Uh, <laughs> they would be glad for this. Um, yeah, check my YouTube channel, Ecom Tom. I was reading the other comments, and I got, I got distracted. <laughs> you guys are distracting um, <laughs> Just start with Walmart, honestly, but just be careful with the stock. Um, and Home Depot, you can find things as uh, low as possibly. Again, it's you inside of the course we teach suppliers that no, not very many people really talk about. But again, it's really about finding your own supplier. You're talking about you are, the manual eBay drop shipping course. I'm assuming that's what he yeah. wants. He wants knowledge to. Okay. Um, you know, it is I just didn't want to mix up Walmart. these people. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Jason. It was addressed to me. <laughs> so uh, Steve Moses says, "I like the course. I'm trying to get my wheels out of the mud." Okay. Um, Jason will get to you on that. Is it true sending products to Amazon FBA after a period of time they will charge five times more for holding your items? Thank you. You're going to have to answer that question. I, I've never heard of that I've before. never sent a product into FBA. No, I've never had them. No, I've They not, charge I've you money for them. holding it yeah, for, for a long, long period of time. Period holds, that's, right? Yeah, that's like a long-term inventory charge, basically, because you're not selling through fast enough. I've never heard five times as high um, I don't think the fee's that high. It it's might be not five times. It might be high for certain categories or something. I don't think so. Um, Catherine Cormier said, "Jenna said hi That's my too. Sister. How's, How's it going?" going? Uh, Marlon said, "Guys, podcast is the way to go now." Okay, listen, listen to, to Gary, Gary V. v. Who's and Gary V? I have no idea. No. You ever heard of him? No. Oh, all right. In all regards right. to podcast and voice, I was the one who suggested voice and Alexa. Oh, what? No, what the hell is voice? Is that Google Voice? Google Voice, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, How does I, that have to, what does that have to do with podcasts? I have no Can idea. You podcast through them? I don't know. But stay on track here. We're almost There's done. an app for podcast. Okay. We're going to stay on track here. Marla. There's a like. Thanks, Leonor. Or... Leonor Dace says, there's a like. Thank you, guys. Follow suit. Uh, Dan- Donald Smith says, can one. you please throw us a few good keywords slash categories? I can search I Zik Analytics one. to find some good items. Okay, we'll tell you the best keywords in, in, in categories are don't waste your time with the keywords and categories and search through people's stores by their the, the competitor research tool. Don't look at any other tool. There's a bunch of little buttons on the left-hand side. There's one of a dude. It looks like a dude wearing like a stealth type costume. It says competitor research. Only use that one and you'll be good to go. And it just saved you a bunch of time and effort, I'll tell you that it's right now. It's very, very true. And also, Zik Analytics has some new widget, or it's kind of new. It says wholesale dropship or wholesale supplier, something like that, wholesale research. Do not use that. There's nothing good on there. I've spent time looking at it's it. Not even it's, it's wholesale. It's it, like it was fake like wholesale. literally fake wholesale. I, I don't know. <laughs> Zik Analytics, honestly, I feel like they have too much time on their hands sometimes. They just build up these random widgets that really don't help people. Marlon, so, we knew who Gary V was. We were just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were being sarcastic there. But um, all right. So last question or last two questions. ZZ says, Will you buy company you shares? You literally now? pronounced it wrong. Then they corrected you in that same comment on how to pronounce their name, bro. By the way my username is pronounced like it's spelled Ziz, okay dude, Ziz. okay well it's a weird name anyway um <laughs> will you buy company shares now company shares in what uh you gotta be specific amazon. i don't know amazon walmart walmart's looking pretty good right now uh the whole market's no. looking nice because it just dropped on 30 percent <laughs> off jc penny sale <laughs> <laughs> it's like cold. it's like the clearance aisle. Of That's coals. very very true. And last question here comes in from Davidus. Tama- uh, I can't say his last name. And I won't try. If I have all the time, drop to drop ship from AliExpress, and now thinking to drop ship from USA suppliers, is it a good idea to delete all lists and start listing from USA suppliers? I would say. Yes, you need to change up your strategy because you're using AliExpress onto eBay. And at the moment, not only is it very unsteady, the supply chain is all messed up, but it was never a good idea to begin with. You go back into the archives of YouTube and see Tom and I talking about this months ago saying, do not use AliExpress as a supplier. It's now not a good idea. people pushing it are a little quiet now. Yeah, yeah. Things change real quickly. Sure, no. been like crickets out there. <laughs> you want to be selling products that you can be sure are actually going to get to the end customer in the United States in a short handling time. And they're probably gonna have much better QC, quality control. Those are two very important things. People have a high expectation with the shipping time and they also have high expectation with the quality. Amazon has set a high precedence. So all the other e-commerce platforms have taken notice of that and that's why we have to abide by those things. So do not use AliExpress. I do not believe that's a sustainable business model. Go where other people are not going. That's the take home for today. Um, we got some more questions coming in. I'm just going to rattle them off. Ecom Tomcat says, tell the person who wants you to name a supplier to get sick analytics and do your homework. Very Thank true. you, Ecom Tomcat. Thank you. I appreciate that. Donald Smith says, thank you. Haven't used competitor research plus respect. Thank there you. you. Knowledge we, bomb. We saved you some time wasting your time watching Zik Analytics instructional videos on their yeah, website. That's very true. Tom, you can get this last question and uh, we'll wrap up. Like the stock market, I have about 10K just lying around made by Tesla. You should buy our course. It'll probably get make you more money over the time, be a little bit more reliable. Uh, but Tesla did take quite the dump. So That's we, very true. I don't know. Tesla's been the most volatile stock and I've ever Z's, seen. And ZZ, Ziz, whatever your name is, down in the description below. And everybody who's still watching right now, 34 people, go ahead David and check Moreno out that. David says, I'm super late, and then we're like canceling. We're check out right that now. link down in the description. That is a direct link to the new wholesale dropshipping course, $400 off, 40% off. And um, that just came out this last Saturday. Learn from the pros on how to do real legit wholesale supply, wholesale drop shipping. Something it's that will be consistent most over time. Sustainable business model going forward. Not something that you work and from 20 to 60 years old to dump money into your 401k to lose hundreds of thousands <laughs> of dollars at the age of retirement. That's very true. Or go to college like we did and pay 120,000 or more 
in uh, student loan debt. So um, yeah, that, that's that's it for you guys. Um, and I appreciate everybody coming out to my second ever YouTube Live. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys got some knowledge out of this. Again, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and hit that little bell notification to get those notifications every time we put out new uh, episodes. And uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap it up here. So appreciate it, yeah. and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.